guys, welcome back to um, episode 0 0.5 of my Delmore um, campaign diary. Whatever it ends up being. Some probably campaign diary is not far, far bad. Um, yesterday we had a session zero of generating characters and getting some ideas of who these characters were. Nothing major yet. People are still coming up with descriptions and character names and the full words, but we've got an idea of what their motivations are and some of their backstory. And there's some interesting stuff in here. And some oh dear me people really are gonna cause me some headaches. But we'll see how it goes. We've ended up with a party of seven players, uh, which I said I wanted four to six, and yes, seven's one more than I wanted, but in all honesty, I'm fine with that. Uh we can make it work. Um mixture of players of experience and of ages and generally good mix of people and it's going to be a lot of fun so my first thought was we'll go through what classes people what races and classes people picked um have a chat about what i like about the ideas they've come already come up with for the characters and what people might change because there will be some changes i'm certain um I'm not going to bring up character sheets or anything like that because, I honestly, some people, we don't need to. So we'll go through the different characters. First off, we have a half a elf bard of the College of Glamour. This is done by one of the new players. Um, I wasn't hugely surprised when she went bard. They're personal reasons for that um i haven't checked with them if they're happy with me talking about them so i won't uh she's ended up playing a high elf, a elf noble who's a bard she's still coming out with full background but it's looking interesting it's definitely gonna be interesting considering we've actually got a second bard this time a half elf Still waiting to hear. They apparently know each other. We'll wait and see how they know each other when they do it. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Having two bars in the party. That's going to cause some interesting effects. As a GM, I know some GMs sort of make you sing so, sing song or play music to get your body inspiration. I don't. What I tend to do is I tend to give a small bonus to those roles that if they've sung or play a musical instrument, you get a bonus. So, D6 plus one rather than a D6. Nothing major. But it gives you a reason to do the music or the song, but doesn't feel like you've been penalised if you won't. Personal opinion, very much the opinion of a player. Next up, we have probably the character who's most fleshed out. A Scourge. Asuma Ranger. Tire background is he hunts down. Well, she hunts down. It's a male character. It's a male player, but it's female character. I have no issues with that. Um, who hunts down fiends? Um, she's been sent to the. In my setting, Asumars aren't actually divine beings being sent down to the planet. They are born half breeds are from humans or elves in this case i believe uh this one's a half elf or quarter elf because it tends to be your parent or your grandparents i think he's still working out if he wants it to be a parent or a grandparent being the divine presence and we need to have a chat over which god arch uh a um being or angel from the god um created it created him uh known as a lot of uh white wings uh she is a ranger she's entirely set up as a hunter of fiends um so in my setting this is going to cause some interesting effects because tieflings of course if we've got uh, tieflings and such like could be classed as um, fiends they're not but they could cause some interesting interactions so it'll be interesting to see how he plays with the next person on the list, who's a tiefling. No, give me a moment. A 
a tiefling rogue. So class of a thief. So he went down the actual selfie um, peep pocket sort of style character rather than the assassin or the more damage dealing ones. I quite like it as a character concept. Again, like the Asimar, two things in my setting are not a separate race. They're humans or elves which have bred with a demon or a devil or something like that ilk. Again, not many generations back, maybe what maybe parent maybe grandparents, but nothing more than not maybe great grandparents, but nothing more than that. And the blood the tiefling blood will die out over time. So a second or third generation tiefling will have a lot less traits of a tiefling than a f a f um a a full on half breed. I'm waiting for the guy to decide exactly where it was. Um, but we're going to discuss his image, how much of the tiefling looks in him. He's going to have, the, as a minimum, he has to have the skin tones. He has to have the weird non-human skin tones. Um, he can have horns, he can have tails. Tieflings aren't seen as evil by default in my setting, so there will be some possible difficulties, but even just having the, the dark red or the dark blue skin would be enough to cause that so i'm letting him decide how far he wants to go down the demon looking route devil looking route as he wants it's going to be some interesting effects there uh next on the list we have and this is my partner's character a gnome druid quite a young gnome from what she was saying going to be mischievous it's a circle of the moon so it can shift forms into an more animals and she's planned to cause some fun with that. I'm thankful for what she was saying. Quite happy with that. Um, it's going to be interesting how she plays it and how it goes. Um, I showed her here at Forge um, this week. And she's having great fun designing her character how she wants it to look. So I wait to see what she does with that. And I'll prob we'll probably end up printing it out. Uh, I would show it now, but I know she wants to tweak it a bit more yet so we're leaving it for the time being but for me short ass gnome that changes into animals it's gonna be fun uh she also has as i said in my setting previously we've got some solar we've got what's called solar crystals in my setting which take energy and can be used to, uh, can use to store energy and release it normally they're called solar crystals because they store energy from the sun and then they fire it out as a force wave causing um you mainly use for guns in the setting so that's how the guns go off rather than it being black powder um if they those uh, crystals crack with energy stored in them it can get messy uh so we'll see how that goes because we do have a couple of gun wielders in the party the tiefling being one of them he actually we're starting at level three so one of the things i did was i allowed them to spend some of their goal, which I gave them to start with, on learning some extra proficiencies if they wanted. So the team three decided to spend some on learning how to use a, pe uh, a pistol. Um, but the gnome has some of what I class as unstable crystals. They're not, they're not good enough quality to be used in their normal standard way. So use them as go. Uh, ammunition for guns, using them to imb imbue elemental power into weaponry. So these things, she's taken a thing and she plans to basically lob them at the enemy. They're going to be basically a small explosion. Uh, nothing massive. Uh, it will be a sling attack. If it hits, there'll be a DC deck save to avoid the da to reduce the damage from the explosion. And it will hit the person who's targeted plus squares around them. So it's not a massive area. Um, and it'll do a bit of damage. Nothing massive, but it'll be it'll be fully, and I quite like the idea, so I let her run with it. Next in the party, we have a dwarf cleric of life. This dwarf is a noble part of the um, a family member of the dwar dwarven king in Iron Peak. We haven't exactly how close, but I'm at the moment thinking cousin. F Cousin, nephew, not direct line to the throne, but reasonably powerful in theory. 
Uh, obviously, they're not starting high peak, so he's not going to be able to order people around me. We'll just slap him. And they will do, because I have a feeling the guy, will tr the guy who's playing this character will try and order people around in not his kingdom. It'll be interesting to see what effect that has on the, uh, the locals. Um... The he's gone to, or uh, life. You we've got a lot of healing in this party. I don't think healing's going to be an issue. <laughs> um, and it's going to be fun. It means I'm probably going to be able to throw stuff at them, which maybe I would be a bit more cautious at nor uh, normally, but on this occasion, no. The last person, and this is probably the most experienced player at the table by myself, is playing a fighter. With the archetypal gunslinger, his race is unknown. Uh, he's not native to Dalmor. He's appeared through the mist. His race is unknown. Myself and the player knows what it is. Everybody else will or will or will not find it out later. Uh, you guys won't either because I expect the video the players to probably watch these. So I don't want to give the information away that he doesn't want to give away. Uh, it'll be interesting how he plays this character. I'm looking in, I'm looking forward to it. He is a pistol wielding gunslinger, so he hasn't got the big rifles or anything that uh if anybody knows Crit Roll where gunslingers come from, Percy had his bit bad news, his big rifle. This guy is very much a pistol rapier dual wield. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he play how it goes. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays and seeing if what route he goes. Because he may end up going down the big gun route long term. But until then, he's pistol and rapier build. So it's going to be a bit... That's going to be fun. As I say, party of seven. Nice mix of players. A uh, bit of magic from the bars, the cleric and the druid. Bit of damage, da outright damage from the ranger and the fighter. And the rogue giving them a bit of uh, control and ability to... Not blow up, die to traps. Not that I would ever kill a player to a trap or anything. Um, so first session's in two weeks. Um, I'll actually put a video up probably this week talking about what the started, uh, talking about the initial, where they started, how I'm going to play it. I'm not going to tell you what happens because the players will find that out, but we'll then talk about how the campaign, how that session went. Um, going forward this time so sometime in the next week you'll get a video on the initial setup of what i'm using in my get in the game because i am using maps and everything else uh I'll probably talk a bit about some of the terrain i've got some of the other bits and uh, then in a fortnight we'll have the first session and we'll talk about that and that will be interesting to see how people uh take that but for now Goodbye, and I'll see people next time.